Well, hey, hey, it's Rob, and uh, I thought I'd just shoot a little video today. I was just messing around with some stuff I've got sitting around here and thought there's probably a lot of people who just have never seen the inside of an 8-track tape cartridge or don't really understand how they work. So I've got a couple here today, and I'll show you what I got. This is my portable sound design Super 8 player. It actually works pretty well. It's a nice little piece of gear. Runs on sea salt batteries, I think, and uh, it has some very complicated controls. You've got, oh, where am I? I'm looking at the phone. You've got volume control, and you've got the track selector. So, eight tracks. You would think they have eight tracks, but they, in fact, have four tracks. And you've got nothing on this side. <laughs> you've got a slot where your 8-track would go in. You see a tape head in there and a speaker on the back. That's how it works. I'm not going to play any music in this video because, you know, it's all copyrighted. and They'll send me a little cease and desist letter, and who needs that on a Sunday? Anyway, so 8-tracks are called 8-tracks because they have 1, 2, 3, 4 stereo tracks. 4 times 2. Stereo is 2, left and right. That gives you 8-tracks. So on each tape... There are actually eight different individual tracks set up in four pairs. Of course, stereo left and right for track one, two, three, and four. Uh, some eight tracks have artwork on them. Some eight tracks are fairly cheap looking like this Moody Blues. And uh, they're just going to give you the uh, track names and nothing else. Eight tracks came in a lot of different colors, the cartridges. That was always cool. And you kind of got to know different record labels. Some of them were black, some of them were orange, some of them were white. So uh, you got, got familiar with the different record labels based on what color cartridges they used to put out. So anyway, like I said, four different, they call them programs, one, two, and three, and four. And it's all on a continuous loop. And I've got this guy cracked open here. So let's go all the way and we'll show you what's inside. It's pretty ingenious. It is basically one reel, a loop that feeds from the outside. And then because this is raised right here, it actually uh, wraps itself back up inside the loop. And it's one continuous loop. Now they only run in one direction. You cannot rewind an eight track. You can fast forward an eight track, but like I said, they only run in one direction. So uh, if you have a song and you want to hear it again, it's not like you can rewind like on a cassette and hear the song again. You have to run the program all the way through and it's usually, uh, you know, three or four songs. And then if you stay on track one, well, you will just, I keep you know, putting this in front of my face. Uh, if you stay on track one, you will once again hear the same three songs over and over and over again. That's how it works. Now, very simple inside here. There's not much. There's a reel. There's tape. There is uh, right there, which is called a uh, pinch roller. It's uh, rubber, and it pushes up against a metal thing called a cap stand, which is spinning, and that spins the tape and plays it through. Now, this thing here is the bane of anyone's existence who uh, messes around with 8-tracks. I think this one's actually been replaced. A lot of people think, oh, I'm going to get into 8-tracks. I'll just get some and, you know, stick them in a player and have some fun. Um, at this point, I'd say maybe 80% of them need to be repaired. You might get to play a couple songs and then the tape will break. This is the problem right here. Like I said, this one is in pretty good shape, so I think it's actually been replaced. This is like window stripping. You can use just the window stripping, the door stripping, the stuff that goes on the side of your door to keep the cold weather out. And this uh, right here, this foam uh, will compress and the tape head will touch it. And that's how you get your music because the metal tape head has to touch the tape and it needs pressure behind it to push up against it. So this thing here needs to be replaced constantly. And uh, if you, like I said, buy a box of, you know, 10 eight tracks, chances are they're all going to need to be replaced. All the foam degrades, falls apart, flakes, and then your tape will not play. Some of them, the earlier ones, have metal right here, a piece of bent metal and two felt pads. Those are great and those will last forever. 
So uh, if you happen to have one of those, you're in good shape. Your tape will probably play. Uh, another tip is if you get an 8-track, a good thing to do is this. Bang on it a couple times because the tape binds up. It freezes in there. It won't play. And that will kind of shake it up a little bit and allow the tape to play. So you get, like I said, four different uh, programs when you're on program one. When you get to the end of the program, there is a metal sensing foil. Let's see if we can pull this apart. And I don't know if I'm going to get lucky and find the foil in here. But uh, you'll have to take my word. Oh, I got it. I got it. I just saw it. Where is it? There it is. So there is a metal sensing foil that uh, connects the two ends of the tape together, of course. I did have it, and it's in here somewhere. Can't be too far. Come on, metal sensing foil. Where are you? Anyway, it's a piece of, literally a piece of metal, a piece of foil, and it will tell players that have a sensor in them to, I'm gonna feel silly if I look through this and it's not in here anymore. Uh, It'll tell players that have a sensor in them to switch to the next program. It's a little piece of metal. Well, guess what? You'll have to take my word for it. It's in there somewhere. And uh, wherever it is, it's a little piece of metal. And if you're playing track one, that little piece of... Oh, wait. It's really hard to find. It's a splice right there. So, oh, glad I found it. <laughs> anyway, it's a little piece of metal. And when this metal goes by the tape head... There is another little device that reads it and that automatically tells the player if it has uh, that functionality to switch from track one to track two. Now this one I believe is an older player and it doesn't do that. So this one will keep repeating track one forever and ever and ever. You have to switch to track two at the appropriate time. So you gotta pay attention. Every three songs you gotta sit there and push the button. If you forget, then you gotta hear the same songs over and over again. So. Not the greatest system, but uh, anyway, one of the problems is that little foil that I just showed you, which I'm not going to find again, um, it breaks. It's a splice. It'll break right there. So a lot of times you'll play a tape, you'll get two or three songs in, you'll get to the point where it's supposed to switch tracks, the tape will break, and that will need to be replaced as well. Uh, another very frustrating thing about 8-track tapes, and I've got some great tapes here by the babies. This one was always my favorite, Union Jacks. Another problem is, so you play program one right there, you get two songs. You play program two, you get two songs, and then you get two and a half songs because Love is Just a Mystery is part one and part two. So the song is actually split between two tracks. So how do they do that? They fade the song in the middle. It sucks. So because I grew up with eight tracks, when I hear the song... Love is a mystery. In my head, I think it's going to fade like halfway through because I'm just so used to hearing the fade. Then the track would switch over. Then it would fade back up and they'd finish the song. It's really a terrible thing. But if you think about it, this tape is a certain length. Say it's 12 minutes long. Well, if you've got an album that uh, has different length songs on it, some four minutes, some five minutes, three minutes or whatever, it's not all going to fit evenly when you split it up four ways. It's not like bands thought, well, how long do these songs need to be so they'll fit on an 8-track? It's really an afterthought. So uh, on this tape here, there's another thing they do. It says, because of musical considerations, there is a 56-second uh, blank spot between programs 4 and 1. So at least they put it at the end of 4. And uh, so you would be finished listening to it anyway. But uh, in any case, you're either going to end up with extra tape at the end of a program or what you're going to have to do is split a song in the middle because they don't always lay in there perfectly. Uh, this tape has one that's split. This tape has one that's split. So there's not much you can do. Uh, like I said, this one here has two songs on every program, except they split one of them, Run to Mexico, which I think is a pretty crappy song anyway. But uh, in any case, it is split in half among two tracks. All right, I'm going to clock out at about 10 minutes, but that's basically what you got when you are messing around with 
8-track, and uh, go ahead and try it out yourself. <laughs> 